You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Friday 12th of December 2014. The answer to grooming in Rotherham is free morning after pills for underage girls. Third of Brits too scared to speak out on immigration and religion. Julie Bentley, the new head of the Girl Guides, covets a body confidence badge. French anti-Islamisation party, Front National, sacks members who converted to Islam. Junker, Greece should avoid a wrong outcome in elections. French woman guilty of sex attacks on plumbers. Sweden calls up reserves over Russian unrest. Thoroughly disgusting. Slavery for dummies. ISIS publishes horrific guide for sex slave owners. Thought for the day. Disinformation abounds at Christmas tide. And finally, a joke to offend the Irish. UK News. The answer to grooming in Rotherham is free morning after pills for underage girls. Chris Burns of The Star writes morning after pills are to be offered free to all girls in Rotherham with pharmacists trained to spot victims of sexual exploitation. That's asking the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? Currently, teenage girls and women over 16 can get the emergency contraception free of charge in the town. But it's intended the scheme is extended to include girls aged 14 and 15 from January in a bid to reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies and abortions. A report going to Councillor Christine Bowman, Cabinet Member for Children and Education Services, said extending the availability would provide a valuable service to vulnerable girls in the town. It said females under 16 are not able to obtain emergency hormonal contraception at pharmacies at present, denying this vulnerable group of young people a valuable service choice based in the community. It's acknowledged that by extending this service to this age group, the service providers need to be especially vigilant in relation to any safeguarding issues which may arise, especially concerns around the possibility of child sexual exploitation. Pharmacists will automatically refer all girls aged 14 and 15 provided with contraception to Rotherham Youth Support Services. World at eight. As usual, the root cause of the problem is not the local white boys, but the local Muslim communities. If it was the real local boys, all hell would break loose. But as it is, no one must say anything. Just sweep the problem under the carpet by labelling these victims vulnerable and virtually performing abortions on them, which suits their abusers down to the ground. Next, we will be giving them underage boys to castrate for one reason or another. Which civilization is going native or backwards, and which is not changing? Third are Brits too scared to speak out on immigration and religion. Donna Edmonds of Br- Breitbart.com reports that more than one in every three Brits self-censors on topics such as religion and immigration, according to a new poll. And four in ten Brits think that there is not enough freedom of speech in Britain today. The findings have prompted the author of a new report on freedom of speech to call on politicians across the political spectrum to robustly debate controversial issues rather than seeking to ban opinions they don't like. The results were revealed in a poll by YouGov, commissioned by the New Culture Forum, which will be launching its new report, Speakers Cornered, 21st Century Britain's Culture of Silence, at an event in central London. When asked whether people in Britain today were free to speak their minds as they should be, a massive 41% said they were not. And of that group, 38% blamed fear of prosecution for people's reticence to speak their minds. A further 12% thought that people were too free to speak their minds. World date. This wall of silence only makes Brits look weak, or at worst, stupid. Julie Bentley, the new head of the Girl Guides, covets a body confidence badge. The new head of the Girl Guides, or Girl Scouts as they're known in the US, has boasted of the fact that she's rubbish at cooking and said that if she were a girl joining the organisation today, the badge she'd most covet would be one that celebrates body confidence. Julie Bentley, who took over the Girl Guides last year, was being interviewed on BBC Radio 4's Desert Island Discs. We learnt that despite never having been a brownie or a girl guide herself, and despite never having done a proper job remotely connected with the kind of outdoorsy, hearty, briskly demanding activities in which the brownies and guides used to specialise, Miss Bentley nevertheless has very forthright views on the organisation's purpose. 
It's not about itchy brown uniforms and sewing and baking. It's a modern, contemporary, vibrant organisation. I'm sorry to hear that Miss Bentley wants to dismiss sewing and baking as belonging to an anti an antediluvian past, which has no place in the modern, contemporary, vibrant girl guides. Miss Bentley doesn't sound like the kind of person who much enjoys physical exercise, but if she'd only summoned up the will to press one of her fingers onto her TV remote in the last few years, one thing she might have noticed is a very popular programme called The Great British Bake Off. World at eight. Well, to say she fits the times is charitable. The old-fashioned guys who were taught to cook and think are one of the reasons why her generation are here in the first place. European News. French anti-Islamization party Front National sacks members who converted to Islam. A local councillor for France's Front National, who made headlines earlier this year after converting to Islam, has been kicked out, the party announced. Maxence Boutet, an elected member of the municipal council of Noir la Grande, a suburb of Paris, was temporarily suspended from the national from the National Front in October after he announced his conversion to Islam in a video and urged fellow members of the anti-Muslim immigration party to do the same. The 23-year-old suspension was lifted shortly after by the party's leadership, a decision that left many FN members unhappy, including Marion Maréchal Le Pen, niece of party leader Marine Le Pen, who called for his punishment to be reinstated. But following reports in the French media, the FN's regional chief, Jordan Badala, confirmed Tuesday that Boutet has now been dismissed from the party. Speaking to AFP, Bardella said that Boutte was an unstable boy, timid and with a limited ability to work in groups. The video touting Islam was the straw that broke the camel's back, he said, adding that the relationship of trust is lost. In the video, sent to ten local FN party executives, Boutte had praised the visionary virtues of the Quran and urged his colleagues to join him in becoming Muslim. Junker. Greece should avoid wrong outcome in elections. Brussels. EU Commission Chief Jean-Claude Juncker has warned Greece against electing extreme forces into power and said he would prefer known faces, so far the strongest intervention of the EU top brass in the Greek campaign. I think that the Greeks, who have a very difficult life, know very well what a wrong election result would mean for Greece and the Eurozone, Juncker said during an Austrian publicity debate with EU Observer and several other Brussels-based journalists. He steered clear of explicit political advice ahead of a presidential election in Greece next week, but said I wouldn't like extreme forces to come to power. <laughs> the presidential elections to be held in the Greek Parliament on the 17th of December could trigger early parliamentary elections if there are three failed attempts to elect a president. The far-left Syriza, which wants Greece's debt erased and an end to austerity measures, is topping the polls. Markets are already jittery at the prospect of a Syriza leader, Alexander Tsipras, coming to power. Asked if Syriza and Tsipras qualify as extreme forces, Juncker replied, I would like Greece to be ruled by people who have an eye and a heart for the many little people in Greece and who also understand the necessity of European processes. Each party who stands for election has to live up to these standards, and I won't comment on the chances of one or the other party, but I would prefer if known faces show up, he added, in an apparent reference to Greece's former EU Commissioner Stavros Dimas, who is standing for election on behalf of the ruling coalition. In a showcase example of being the more political entity that Juncker promised, the EU Commission has all but endorsed Dimas. The decision can help remove uncertainties around markets. It is a strong signal to Europe that Prime Minister Samaris put forward his candidate Stavros Dimas, a former commissioner and a convinced European, said EU Commission spokesperson Anika Breithart on Wednesday. Breithart denied taking sides in the election, but said that at this point we feel like we want to make a statement about the Greek forthcoming elections. World date. After what the Greek government did with Golden Dawn, a far-right party, Junker is living up to his name of Junk. What an ill-veiled attempt at blackmail. Right decision, my backside, Junk. The EU has become a Stasi-based organisation full of diversity retards who are nearly over the hill. But then a socialist government might suit you after all. French woman guilty of sex attacks on plumbers. A court in France this week handed out a 12-month suspended prison sentence to a woman who sexually assaulted two plumbers who came to repair the central heating in her house. The court in the northern town of Arras heard how the woman tried to entice the men into her bed and began groping one of the workmen when he was bent over working. When you've done with the radiators, come to my bed, the woman said, identified only as ID, 
told one of her two workers in October last year, according to a Lavoie de Nord newspaper. When one plumber was bending over to do some work, the woman, who's in her late forties and said he was an alcoholic, approached him from behind and began caressing his back and other parts of his body. He spurned her advances. She then closed the shutters of the apartment and began making even more obscene prospects propositions. When the plumbers again declined, she smacked one of them across the ear before throwing them out of her home and refusing to let them take their plumbing equipment with them. When the police came the next day to recover the tools, the accused again lashed out, this time hitting the caretaker of the building. The woman told the court that she realised my behaviour was not normal that day with the workers. She said that after the incident she had fallen even deeper into alcoholism, but in recent months had managed to stop drinking and was now training to be a care worker. The court gave her a 12-month suspended prison sentence in order to pay a 1,000 euros in damages to the pair of plumbers. World at eight. I don't know which is worse. The thought of this retard as a care worker or the poor plumbers. She must have been ghastly to be turned down by healthy young plumbers. Sweden calls up reserves over Russian unrest. The Swedish government has announced plans to retrain Swedes who were previously conscripted into the Swedish army in an effort to increase the country's war capabilities after recent Russian unrest. The world has changed in a negative way, Defence Minister Peter Hulquist told Swedish broadcaster SVT. He cited the rearmament of Russia, the country's annexation of Crimea and Ukraine, and the armed conflict in eastern Ukraine justification for the retraining plans. The move will mean that around 7,500 people who have served in the Swedish army since 2004 may be called in for a month of retraining. The armed forces will be able to carry out fully manned war preparations which will result in increased operational capacity, Hultqvist explained. The earliest training could be introduced would be the beginning of next year, reported the TT News Agency. When the local talked to Defence Minister Peter Hulquist last month, he said that despite a submarine intruding in Swedish waters, there is no immediate threat against Sweden. I think that there is a new security situation in the Baltic area and in the Baltic Sea. We see more exercises, we see more intelligence activities, and what has happened now has confirmed that we are in another situation. If we compare this to the situation five or ten years ago, he explained. We have no immediate threat against Sweden, but we have a security environment around us that has changed in a negative way, and that is why we need to develop in the discussions about how we cooperate with other countries. World of date. A bit previous, I call it. World News. A thoroughly disgusting Slavery for Dummies ISIS publishes horrific guide for sex slave owners. A.B. Sanderson of Breitbart.com writes, ISIS militants have published a horrific document outlining how sex slaves can be treated, including with beatings and daily rapes. The pamphlet, which is dated Muharram 1436, October stroke November 2014, and was printed by ISIS publishing house Al Hima Library, is titled Suwa Jawab Fihal Sabi Warikab Answers and Questions on Taking Captives and Slaves. The document was obtained by the US-based Middle East Media Research Institute, who published full details of it on their website. It was written by ISIL's Department for Prisoners and Women's Affairs, presumably, says the memory, in response to the uproar caused by the many reports this summer that ISIS had taken Yazidi girls and women as sex slaves. It explains in sickening detail when a female can be raped by her captors, some of whom pay as little as £27 for each of their victims. Question 18. May a man use the al-az technique with his female, female slave? Answer. A man is allowed to use al-az during intercourse with his female slaves with or without her consent. I believe that is some form of uh, family planning or withdrawal. Question 19. Is it permissible to beat a female slave? It is permissible to beat a female slave as a form of darb tadib, disciplinary beating, but it is forbidden to use darb tataxia, literally breaking, breaking beating, darb al tashifi, beating for the purpose of achieving gratification, or darb al tadadib, torture beating. Further, it is forbidden to hit the face. The vast majority of their victims are women and children from the Yazidi region who were kidnapped during the Mount Sinjar massacre in August of this year. Up to 5,000 are being held in the de facto capital, Raqqa. It lays out the rules for how to deal with captives in a simple question-and-answer format. Even stupid militants can understand. 
Questions include, is it permissible to have intercourse with a female captive immediately after taking her possession? And if the female captive was impregnated by her owner, can he then sell her? Even children are not safe from rape at the hands of the militants, with guidance on intercourse with the prepubescent child, stating it is acceptable if she is fit for intercourse. If she is not, then her captor must make do with forcing other sex acts on the girl. Question 13. Is it permissible to have intercourse with a female slave who has not reached puberty? It is permissible to have intercourse with a female slave who hasn't reached puberty if she is fit for intercourse. However, if she is not fit for intercourse, then it's enough to enjoy her without intercourse. It says that slave women, known as al sabi can be taken from any group of people with whom ISIL militants consider themselves at war and makes a detailed case for why Christians and Jews are permissible as slaves, but ex-Muslims are not allowed to be captured. The rape of a female captive, the document explains, is perfectly acceptable even for married men and in one paragraph the document even says that virgins can be raped immediately after their owners purchase them. For those who are not virgins, their uterus must be purified first, and it even says that it's legal to have sex with a child, providing she is fit for intercourse. The price of human misery, the full ISIS price list for slaves. A woman aged 40 to 50, 50,000 dinars, that's £27. A woman aged 30 to 40, 75,000 dinars, that's £40. A woman aged 20 to 30, 100,000 dinars, that's £53. A girl aged 10 to 20, 150,000 dinars, that's £80. A child under 9, 200,000 dinars, £106. World at 8 should sell very well in the UK, shouldn't it? Especially up north near Rotherham, Rotherham and Rochdale. Thought for the day... Now, apart from the fact that you would have had to be a better man than I to spot the real meaning of Christmas in the UK, as in a manger or the Holy Family and not just trees, stars and Santas rigged up as cheaply as possible so as not to offend foreigners, who are generally not offended, as they're too busy either making money out of us Brits or spending their benefit money at Black Sales Days. I'm always surprised at how the Brits in local councils and the rest take on themselves to protect anyone's religion but the Christian one, and how almost hysterically every year more and more nun decorations are actually used to prevent any clash of religious feelings. I'm even more surprised that during Eid, Ramadan and Diwali we're all exhorted to join in, make allowances for bums pointing to Mecca all day, being half-starved or throwing red paint all over everything, but our Christian Christmas, the hint is in the first part of the word Christmas, is being slowly but inevitably submerged. However, this doesn't stop our shopkeepers, store owners or whatever, rack up the imports on really trashy Chinese-made bits of stuff which lie around in ever-increasing mountains until New Year. I used to love Christmas, but now it seems a rush to Amazon or the local mobile phone shop with a pair of small electrical trees hanging from one's earlobes and that's that. I digress, but also what gets me is the amount of misinformation that is covering our papers and news the last week and due to go on all through Christmas. As you must know by now, we Brits celebrate this holiest time entirely through the TV, the web or mobile phones. There are several headlines which the newscast has always put on a sad face for, which is entirely hypocritical and pandering to the diversity lot, who are probably paying their wages, of course. And one of these is the Guantanamo torture files. I don't believe I've heard anything so pathetic in my life. And what is the most pathetic aspect of this is that our British media think this is new news. No, it ain't. It's very old news, rehashed because very little happens around this time of the year in the Western world. It's also the last gasp of a failing president and the Democrats who are proving that diversity, open borders, a laughable health care plan and crapping on about gun laws is not doing them or their people any good. And the Republicans, who seem to reflect the true American spirit of old, will boot them out. So the half-white and holy Muslim Obama is going to close Guantanamo. That would be the worst thing to do and would make America, the UK and the rest of the Western world look even more cowardly than they do now, which would be hard to do. Perhaps there is method to his madness. Perhaps he thinks that rather than getting shot in the head, shutting down the big Gitmo would get him a Nobel Prize. Now, although I'm a reasonable person, I like to think, if 9-11 had occurred in the City of London, I would like to think that even the most liberal, diversity-ridden wanker would harbour a thought or two of revenge. 
Our 7-7 was a mere rehearsal of what could come to us due to our lack of brains in not closing our borders to Muslims many years ago. Some Muslims may have a vague point in the interference in their countries and primarily the Arab Spring springs to mind, but that occurred sometime after 9-11 and not before. Afghanistan was invaded by the Russians before the US and us, and I don't see a 9-11 occurring in Moscow, do you? And do you know why that is? Because like all fanatics, these terrorists are cowards. They killed nearly 3,000 civilians, including women and children, and not all of them Christians in the towers, then, during the Arab Springs, operated from behind women and children and the sick, and then bleated on about dead kids. What's happening now in Syria is the way that a Muslim government should handle rebellion. They stamp on it. And if the West had not, in the beginning, before their change of heart, funded ISIS, that war would have been over and done with. I do believe you should leave like to fight like. Because in the case of Islam, it's always wrong to even comment, apparently, even let alone send them our own awful homegrown whatevers. So now there will not even be the threat of imprisonment for terrorists who do not succeed going to paradise. What a shame. I'm not normally a fan of torture, but waterboarding and sensory deprivation are not torture. Now, removing their mobile phones and iPods may well be just that. Waterboarding has been used in asylum for years under water therapy, and sensory deprivation is undertaken to clear the mind. But I frankly and personally don't give a rat's ass if they are or have been tortured. They were at the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing, and I also don't care if we have what are laughingly called British in there as well. As far as I'm concerned, you can shit the entire bloody Muslim community over there and leave them. But then, like the African slaves, we would leave the Americans with the problems, and they have enough of that as it is. So now we have a weeping and a wailing and a renting of clothes about terrorists, showing them stumbling about blindfolded, whereas I would have shot the lot and saved all this rumpus. We are leaving Afghanistan, and it will revert to the Taliban within 24 hours, despite the hefty payments we are giving the Pakistani and Afghani governments. You only have to know that Awala, or whatever her name is, is a school, probably private and probably paid for by you, in Birmingham, the new Mecca. In fact, miles away from her hometown, another bloody migrant, although due to the Taliban, a much wealthier one. Suffice to say that one showing I saw of a school in somewhere, the male teacher did not look too happy, neither did the girls, although well rehearsed, and of course out in the boonies, the girls will still not be educated. So really, a publicity exercise gone very wrong. They want to keep Gitmo open because there'll be more residents coming in unless they lose all sight of actually keeping their identity and culture and standing up for their country and their people, and likewise the UK and Europe. We need a Gitmo over here, and we need the army on our borders, not a passel of tired, disillusioned officials who really couldn't give a stuff who or what comes in or where they go. The Polish woman collecting 220 quid per month when she isn't even living or working in this country is just laughable. As is the rejuvenation project in Liverpool, who sold a large house for a pound to an Asian family, who, because there was no mortgage, could easily afford the 30,000 to be spent on it, which gives them a fully paid up £150,000 home over here. Marvellous. Try doing that in Calcutta or wherever if you're white or European. Not so much rejuvenation as colonisation. Our poor white youth, eager to start families, but not probably drive taxis, could have benefited from such a scheme, couldn't they? Wonder if the new home start drive will do as much for our own. William attacks China was another wonderful header. Of course he did, bless him. To be truthful, he was right, especially about the ivory trade. Now, we all know that China cannot produce anything of good quality anymore, but can afford poachers and middlemen to get the very best from other countries. The odd thing is that aged emu bone compares very well with worked ivory and at less cost to the poor bloody elephants. But will they use it? Your guess is as good as mine. So they will keep paying money out, probably from all the rotten imports we seem to like, to pay black bastards to kill whole families of elephants for just a couple of whole tusks. A wicked thing.
Well, now we're well into December and looking forward to Christmas and a better New Year, although that remains dubious. I was glad to see Farage going through the steps of torture known as Question Time, although they didn't sit him next to a very black, angry person or what my better half calls a stroppy nigger, which NG had the pleasure of. Although Farage was called a racist something or other, it always gets some idiot on television, doesn't it? Full of the Xmas spirit and all that. So next year will be the year of the final humiliation of the UK with the general elections, which should be absolutely hilarious. It will in fact give our media even more power to print or say whatever rubbish they're handed. And will we be any the wiser? Nope. The new meaning of media messages is, tell them anything, they don't listen anyway. Roll on Christmas, please. And finally, a joke to offend the Irish. Two women were sitting next to each other at a bar. After a while, one looks at the other and says, I can't help but think from listening to you that you're from Ireland. The other woman responds proudly, Yes, I am. The first one says, So am I. And what about in and whereabout in Ireland are you from? The other woman answers, I'm from Dublin, I am. The first one responds, So am I. And what street did you live on in Dublin? The other woman says, a lovely little area. It was in the West End. I lived on Warbury Street in the old central part of town. The first one says, Faith and Begara, it's a small world. So did I. So did I. And what school did you go to? The other woman answers, Well, now I went to the Holy Heart of Mary, of course. The first one gets really excited and says, And so did I. Tell me, what year did you graduate? The other woman answers, Well, now, let me see. I graduated in 1964. The first woman exclaims, the good Lord must be smiling down upon us. I can hardly believe our good luck at winding up in the same pub tonight. Can you believe it? I graduated from Holy Heart of Mary in 64 myself. About this time, Michael walks into the bar, sits down and orders a beer. Brian, the bartender, walks over to Michael, shaking his head and mutters, It's going to be a long night tonight. Michael asks, And why do you say that, Brian? Brian answers, The Murphy twins are drunk again. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I and the team at World at Eight and Radio Britain wish you all a very happy and a very safe weekend. <laughs>